This season, Manchester City have only tasted defeat four times and only once in the league. That was away at Liverpool and the Champions League quarter-finals has brought the two teams together once more with Liverpool having home advantage in the first leg. Against Manchester City, with their vaunted attacking lineup and prodigious ability to keep the ball, many sides have chosen to sit deep and try to block. By ceding possession and territory, the intention is to allow City to have the ball in areas where it isn't dangerous and compress the space where it is. When City attack, they tend to do so with four players pushed high and with width, with one player, usually De Bruyne or David Silva, tucked in behind and in possession. They move the ball quickly wide or as a through ball with their movement, pace and individual skill causing problems. By compressing the space, it should be easier to mark these attackers one on one or even double up out wide while also closing the passer in possession. In addition, sides who leave one player up the pitch will hope that allowing City's defensive line to push forwards, gaps are left in behind. A quick vertical pass and players rushing up on the counter could in theory leave City vulnerable on the counter should Edison fail to sweep in behind the back line and the defence not manage to regain a decent position. Liverpool, in the 4-3 win at Anfield in January, did not do this. And they will hope that once more, their intense pressing game and the ability of their front three will be enough to gain an advantage heading into the second leg at the Etihad Stadium. Of course, pressing with intensity isn't sufficient in itself. A team has to press intelligently as well, as Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool do that to no little effect. The front three of Liverpool employed a sort of triangle press when City were in possession centrally at the back. Firmino would push forwards as the tip of the press, while Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah would take positions up diagonally behind him. While Firmino actively pressed the player in possession, the other two forwards were marking passing lanes rather than pressing players. Ideally, this would either force the player in possession to go long or even back to Edison, or it would cause the fullbacks to retreat, at which point Liverpool would press in the wide spaces more actively, using the touchline as an additional defender. This effect was compounded by Liverpool's commitment to double pressing out wide where possible. If Mane was pressing Walker, he would be joined by Wijnaldum and even left-back Robertson. Liverpool actively sought to hem City's wider players in by the touchline. This caused a compression of space around the pitch, which was noticeable especially in the early stages of the game. Liverpool's team would shift horizontally and vertically to make City's playing area as small as possible. If the ball was on Liverpool's left, Liverpool's right-sided players would be far across enough to be level with the penalty spot or even closer to the left touchline. This gave City increasingly less space to play in and even though there were areas of space on the other touchline, the number of players in the way meant a switch ball was impossible. In central areas, Liverpool tried to defend narrowly and make it hard for City to pass through them. This encouraged City to go wide, at which point Liverpool would press. The other noticeable aspect was how Liverpool tried to close down Fernandinho whenever possible with much of the work being done by Emre Chan or Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Fernandinho tended to look for a safety first backwards pass, especially as his midfield partners De Bruyne and David Silva tend to play higher up the pitch than a standard midfield three would. Whoever pressed Fernandinho would then immediately chase the pass backwards as well, putting pressure on the receiver and hurrying their decision making. Of course, this sort of pressing is hard to sustain and defence alone does not win games. Two things stuck out at Anfield that allowed Liverpool to progress the ball in attack. The first was how much Emre Chan was able to find space in front of Liverpool's backline when they were in possession. Because Fernandinho sat back in case Firmino dropped between the lines, City's midfielders tended to mark the passing lanes to their counterparts, leaving Aguero to press the centre-backs. Chan was regularly in space, affording a good, regular passing option for defenders in possession. Oxley chamberlain who excelled during the game, was also able to get forward a lot between the lines. The movement of Liverpool's front three creates space for midfielders to push up into, especially in the half spaces. Oxley chamberlain especially was able to do this and pose a consistent threat. 
This, combined with the trio of Firmino, Salah and Mane, meant that Liverpool had enough going forwards to ensure all their hard defensive work didn't go to waste. Whether they can do the same in the Champions League remains to be seen, but if anyone knows how to beat City, it's Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool.